one advantage of waking up super early to come out and do a video, no one, I mean no one, is out here right now. So we'll finally get into it, what I consider the pros and the cons of the speed booster. So as we know, when you put glass into an adapter, instead of just doing a pass-through adapter, it can degrade the image quality somewhat. Now I think Viltrox does a really good job at not degrading the image quality too much. I mean, here's an older adapter, and here's the Viltrox adapter. If you really pixel peep, you will see, especially in photos, that there is a slight loss in image quality. Now that's something to keep in mind when you're doing photography or video because we're trying to get high quality images. So if you don't like that hit and sharpness, this might not be the adapter for you. con is that weird battery draining issue. I have no idea what is causing that, but for some reason if you leave the adapter on your camera for too long, it will actually drain your battery. Now it's not too bad, it's only if you like leave it overnight. It's not going to like drain an entire battery in two or three minutes. But it is something to think about because the M50 has notoriously bad battery life. If you don't have that many batteries or you forget to take it off, you're not gonna be very happy to be having to charge your batteries before you go out and shoot. Now in my last video, I was talking about how much I would love to use EFS lenses on this with the 4K. That way I have pretty much a Super 35 4K. And that's not entirely accurate, but it's not entirely inaccurate. The fact is, is that Canon brand and EFS lenses will not work with the speed booster. They have an extra little tab off of the back of them. Now you can modify them, but I'm not going to suggest to you that you cut apart your lens in order to modify it to fit on the speed booster. But a lot of other lenses like the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 will actually work with the speed booster because it's an EF mount, not an EFS mount, even though it is only an APS-C body. Also, the Tokina 11 to 20 will still work with the speed booster. So you could use those two lenses and any of the other EF mount APS-C lenses with the speed booster on the Canon M50. So you could potentially get close to a Super 35 4K from the M50 using the speed booster. So is that a pro or a con? I guess it's a con that you can't use EFS lenses, but it's a pro that you can use EF mount APS-C lenses. <laughs> now the final con that I found when using it with my 50mm 1.8, which is the only EF lens I have, is it makes the autofocus a lot louder. And I'm not really sure why it does this. It makes it sound loud and grindy. But for using lenses like that as a B-roll lens, I mean, you're not going to be using audio. It's not going to be that intensive for B-rolls. So it might not be that big of a deal for you, but that is a definite con. Especially since I know a lot of M50 shooters, their first EF lens is going to be the 50mm 1.8. So if you're going to be doing a lot with audio on top of the camera with a 50mm 1.8, you need to think about that because it is quite a bit louder than a normal adapter. Now, even though it makes it loud, the autofocus is super fast. I mean, it is way faster than my Comlight adapter. I'd love to see how it compares to the Canon mount adapter, but compared to the adapter that I have been using and been perfectly happy with, it is just way faster. So that is not an issue. The autofocus is going to be fast and accurate. I almost lost the list that I had of my pros and cons. Now another thing that's actually a pro and a con at the same time is that the tripod foot for the adapter actually will work when you're using the cage. Now why is that possibly a con? Well it also makes your Arca Swiss on the bottom of your cage not work properly. So it's kind of a toss up. If you're not using the Arca Swiss on the bottom of your cage then eh, it's not a big deal. But it will work with the cage which is I know a concern for me and a lot of other M50 shooters. Now of course the main two things that it does for 
does is it increases our field of view. This is huge. I mean, taking something like a 50 millimeter 1.8 and taking it from a 1.6 clap to a 1.1 clap, that is massive. For me, the Nifty 50 was almost too tight. I like shooting a bit wider because I'm usually shooting handheld and tighter lenses without IS just don't do that well for handheld video and I just never liked grabbing it out. And the other thing that it does is it increases your effective aperture by one stop. Now there are a lot of mathematical scientific things but since I'm not that good at making scientific videos I'm gonna leave that to someone else who knows a lot more about the mathematics and the equations of how the speed booster works. But what I can do as a video guy is show you that there is actually a noticeable bump in brightness and you do get a lot more out of a 1.8 aperture and it does bring it closer to 1.2. Now the sky is actually starting to change color because the sun is going to be rising any minute now and so before I close out this video I'm going to do some sunrise b-roll. Lauren and the kids are up, so uh, sunset b-roll is gonna have to wait for another day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.